kids, this is Judy, and I'm going to sew up some boxer briefs with you. These are my size, so an adult medium, and I have this really fun <coughs> foodie print for my main, <coughs> main legs, excuse me. I have this little polka dot for the center front and center back, and I actually used the same little polka dot for my little liner, crotch liner. And then I'm going to use this fun green for my bands. I'm doing the low rise banded option. And I have the leg bands as well. So I'm going to bring you in just a little bit closer so you can see exactly what we're doing here and jump in. I'm going to grab all my polka dot pieces, which is my center back. Here's my center back and my center front. And I'm gonna align them at these center notches. And then I'm gonna grab my crotch liner and these two are right sides together. I'm gonna add my crotch liner's right side, right side crotch liner to wrong side back center piece. And I'm just going to clip those all together at that center notch. Then I'm gonna walk out to the side, clip them all at the side as well. And one more at the front, if you want one more at the front. There we go. So again, these are my front center piece, back center piece, right sides together. And then I'm going to add my crotch liner to the back, right sides to wrong sides of my back. And I'm going to stitch this on my serger. I'm going to use my serger for most of the construction here. You can also use your regular machine with a straight stitch. I'm sorry, with a stretch stitch. I might have said straight just now. Stretch stitch. And um, this pattern has a 3 8 inch seam allowance rather than my normal half inch. I always use a smaller 3 8 seam allowance when I do um, like swimwear and undergarments. It's usually easier to get those really small little curves and things accurate with a bit smaller seam allowance. So you're only trimming off a little eighth of an inch. So here we go. I'm going to flip my liner to the front and give that seam a nice press. And your liner should line up to your front piece exactly the same. I'm gonna baste these right here. You can also um, serge this front piece, which I can do. No. You don't wanna trim anything off here. It's just to give it a nice finished edge. I have um, someone baby talking my doggy down there. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to run a basting stitch down both these sides. A basting stitch is your longest straight stitch on your machine. Mine goes to a five, which is um, the most common. And I'm just going to run that a, a really small little eight. We can do it up to a quarter of an inch since our seam allowance here is three eighths. Whenever I baste edges together, I always usually do about an eighth seam allowance. Helps keep it nice and accurate. All right, so there we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our leg pieces and we're gonna fold them in half, right sides together, and we're gonna stitch this 
the little inseam right here on both pieces. Now with right sides together, what we're going to do is we're going to take one main leg, does not matter which one, and our center piece, this is now one big piece, and what we're going to do is we're going to put it right sides together and align these notches. You have a single notch on the front and a double notch on the back, and same on your center piece. Here's my single notch, here's my double notch. And so what we're going to do is just align those notches first. Make sure we have the front with the front and the back on the back. And you want these right sides together. If you can't get them to match, it just means you need to flip your center piece. Now I'm just going to add a lot more clips throughout this little U shape here. This is kind of a curvy piece, so you might find yourself easing in and out a little bit. That's why it's important to do both notches first and then kind of the rest. Your seam for your center, center pieces just does not align to the seam on the legs. And that's so the cross lining kind of goes, um, here's the center and it kind of goes a little bit forward and a little bit back. And one more clip in here. I always like to press my seam for my legs towards the back. All right, so now we kind of have this U shape to stitch up. The same 3 8 inch allowance here. keep all these clips here because we're going to do the exact same thing for the other leg now. You can, you want to press this seam towards the legs and you can top stitch this. I'm not going to for sake of speed on this video, but you can use your regular sewing machine with your favorite top stitching stretch stitch or your cover stitch machine if you're lucky enough to have one. So it's really starting to look like a little boxer now. We're just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So with our leg, we're just going to align the notches first, right sides together. I always cut my notches out like a mountain. That way I don't have to worry about accidentally snipping too far into my seam allowance. Okay, so now I'm just going to pin in between here. As many pins as you need to feel nice and secure. That everything's lined up. 
Again, I like to press this same allowance to the back. Okay, and we're just gonna stitch this U shape right here again for the other leg. on your basting stitch it gives you a nice perfect line to put your blade on as you're trimming off your eighth inch seam allowance like a little pair of boxer briefs now. There we go. So now all we need to do is the waistband and the leg bands. I'm gonna go ahead and do the waistband first. And then the leg bands will just be a repeat of that exact same process. So here is my waistband. It's folded just how I cut it. And I'm gonna sew down this little short side to create a circle. It's right sides together. Now I'm gonna fold it in half lengthwise. Really creating our waistband. I like to go ahead and mark it when I cut it. So I already have a center notch here on this side. Um, if you've watched several of my videos, anytime I cut a pattern piece on the fold that I know I'm gonna have to mark the center of, I just go ahead and mark it. It's already on the fold. It's already pretty much marked for you. It just takes a quick second to mark that notch and you have it ready for you. So I'm gonna line those two markings to find my quarter points on the side here. Marking this into even quarters and kind of folding it at the same time. If your fabric's difficult to work with, you might want to give it a good press when you fold it in half before marking it. I'm working with um, all cotton lycra right here, so all really easy um, to work with. So I'm not going to worry about that. I picked um, these cotton micras so they'd be nice and easy on the video to work with. So, quartered. Now I'm just going to do the same exact thing with my boxers. So I'm going to fold this little center section and mark that center. There we go. Pins are actually a lot more accurate for marking the center, but... Um, the clips are a lot easier to see in the video, so I try to use the clips when I do it for videos. Okay, now the exact same as the band, I'm just going to align these two clips and kind of walk, walk this top edge until I can find my quarter point. we go. So now they're both quartered, marked in even quarters along the top. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip this on right sides together, which really this fabric could be anyway, because it's just a solid fabric. If yours has a right side or a wrong side, I'm sorry, not a right side or wrong side, if it is directional. So like this little print, if I was using this for a waistband, I'd want to make sure when I flipped it up, that it's facing the correct way. So I'm just going to align all of these marked points in my waistband in place. Wow, 
last one. I'm just going to do these. Um, if you're new to sewing knits, you might want to add a couple more um, clippies or pins to hold it in place. I'm just going to do these four and I'm just going to stretch evenly as I attach the band. You don't want to stretch your underwear at all, your main boxer brief pieces. You just want to stretch the waistband piece. This is still 3 8 inch seam allowance here, so you're still going to be trimming off that eighth of an inch. A little hint if your fabric's curling bad and you're having a hard time telling exactly how much seam allowance you're taking because it's curling. Look at how much fabric is left. <clears throat> Let me zoom in here. Look at how much fabric is left right here on the side of your foot. And make sure that's nice and even. That way, if it's curling real bad and you're having a hard time telling exactly how much you're taking off, if you keep this spacing nice and even the whole time you're sewing, your band will come out nice and even. sewing for myself and my family, I just come off the edge. When I used to sew to sew, I would flip my fabric around and turn back just to double, 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 make sure that that was never going to come undone. And then you can um, flip it up and you want to give this a nice press for sure. Anytime you're doing bands and stretching, Anything to fit, you always want to do a really nice press afterwards. You're going to press your um, seam allowance down when you press, and you can top stitch along here. Again, I'm not I'm not going to top stitch um, to try to help make the video um, a little bit easier and quicker to watch, but definitely a nice press is necessary. The top stitching is um, personal preference. All right, I'm going to do the left band exactly the same process, and I'm going to do it very speedily. my seam on my band with the seaming on the leg band. Then I'm just going to find the halfway point. I usually only do the leg bands on halves instead of um, a quarter point. I also like to nest these seams, which means I'm going to press my seam allowance in my band towards the front and my seam allowance on the legs to the back, aligning the seam and that way the seam allowances are kind of going opposite directions to help with bulkiness right there. And then on the legs, I'm just gonna do the same thing where I'm going to hold them at the seam and walk it out to find the center, the opposite center point. Here we go. You'll notice the leg bands don't stretch very much. The legs are already pretty snug, and so the bands don't really need to 
be pulled tighter. Um, they are very slightly smaller, but um, not as tight as the waistband, you'll notice. add some top stitching still if you would like. Um, otherwise, we're all done. I hope you guys enjoyed the sew up and I hope you also enjoy your Braxter briefs. Don't forget to share and let me see. Bye y'all.